What's up guys? Learning with Rich here. Um, in this video, we are going to discuss about the Clash Detective tool in Navisworks 2022. Okay, so just take note, this Clash Detective tool can only be used if your version is managed. Okay, so you can't use the Clash Detective if you are using Navisworks Freedom or Navisworks Simulate. Okay, so you need to have a full version of Navisworks, which is Navisworks Manage. Okay, so basically the Clash Detective tools enables you to search through your total project model, identifying cross-discipline interferences or clashes earlier in the design process or even late in the design process. Okay, so... This feature is available only again for Manage, okay? So our Clash Detective tool can be found on the Home tab. And then if you go to the Tools panel, you can see here your Clash Detective, okay? So Clash Detective tool enables effective identification or inspection and reporting of interferences or clashes in our 3D project model. So using the Clash Detective can help you, of course, to reduce the risk of human error during model inspection. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do, of course, we need to have a model. So if you have a Revit model, so basically you need to import that or export that to Navisworks and then append it here in Navisworks. But I already have some model for that, so I'm going to open this uh I'm all, mm, not this one. So maybe I'm going to open this one. M E P or I think I have a complete model here. So let me just open my model construction. Oops. Okay, not this one. Okay, so let us open the sample project here, which is the construction. Okay, so this is the sample project in uh, Revit exported to Navisworks and save it as a NWF file. Okay, so let us try to do some introduction on the Clash Detective. So let us turn on the Clash Detective. So I'll be selecting this. Just click this one. And then you will now see here your Clash Detective window. Okay, again, just like the other window in Navisworks, you can pin that or unpin like auto-hide or hide. So if you click that, it will now auto-hide, right? So if you're going to click that again, it will show. But of course, you can pin that so that it's always showing on your window. <clears throat> okay, so we have here this expand if you click that one, you will be able to see here the tests or the current tests that you have in your project. So obviously, currently, I don't have any tests here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a test. Okay, so I'm going to select here, add test. And then you will now be able to see here below. If you have selected the select tab, you will see here all the model inside your project so like you can see here the architecture mep structure nwc file against architecture mep and structure dot nwc okay so after you create your test so you can change the name here so let's say um for example i'm going to right click that and then i'm going to select here rename Okay, so you can put any name that you want here. Just make sure other users in your company will be able to understand it easily. So let's say I will just call this uh, docs versus pipe and then enter. Okay, right. So in this uh, window, so this is a dockable window that enab enables you to set up the rules and options for your clash test view the results and you can also sort and produce the clash tests or clash reports so we will be doing that 
in the next video. So this is just the introduction. So basically the workflow in the Autodesk Navis Works clash detection is you can select a previously run clash test or if you don't have that so you can just create a new test just like what I just did so you can add a test okay and then after that you need to specify the rules for the test so the rules can be found here okay of course these are all disabled if you do not have a test here so if I'm gonna select that and then delete all so you will notice these are all disabled right because you don't have tests that is the reason why we created a test. You click that one, and then you put the name here, logical name, and then after that, you specify the rules, okay? And then the next thing that you need to do is you need to select the required items to be included in the test and set the test type options, which is here below, okay? So these are the test types options that you can select and then after that after you select the object here or the elements or the model that you want to check the clashes with so let's say the MEP versus structure so I'm going to select that you will notice the run test here is now enabled so any moment you can now click that one to run the test but of course you still need to specify the test type options so we have settings here and then we have these icons here okay so after you run the test you will be able to see the results here so you can review the results and assign issues to responsible parties and then after that you can now produce a report of the identified issues and circulate for review and resolution so basically that's the clash detective workflow okay so just uh, review first you need to select a previously run clash test or start a new test by using the add test tool and then after that you specify the rules and then you select the required items review the results and then you can produce the report here okay so what are the clash uh, test rules here okay so if you want to run a test again you just need to go to the, you, you just need to select again and then run test okay anyway we are going to discuss all of this so I'm just uh, giving you an introduction in uh, clash detection so let's say I'm gonna click the run test here so I'm gonna select that one and then you will now notice here on our test one so you have 767 new clashes okay and then you also have here a column for active reviewed approved and then result okay you can change the status here of your clash so let's say for example this is my clash number one so if you click that so this is your clash number one here so you can zoom out okay so what you can do is you can move the slider here and then you can see here display settings okay so that's the display settings so you can click that one to hide and unhide okay so what you can do is um, you can deem other you can click that one and then you will notice the other elements here in your view will gonna be dim and then it will only highlight the elements that is clashing okay so you have this and then you have that and of course you can also see here the status the level the grid found at etc etc okay and there are some things that you can do here you can specify the item colors okay and then you can also highlight all the clashes you can hide other okay you can click that and then it will hide the other elements for you to be able to view it more nicely <clears throat> or of course I prefer dim other like that and then you also have here this one animate transition okay if you uncheck this one animate transition and then you click one clash so you will notice 
the view will just go straight away to the clash. Okay, there's no animation because if this is checked and then you click one clash, so there's an animation, right? Going to that particular clash, just like that. Okay, again, it's preference, it's up to you. Okay, so what do you prefer, animated or not? Okay, so basically right after you select the elements, you run the test and then you go to the results. So you can see here all the clashes in your project. So let's say, for example, you already resolved this in, in Revit. So what you can do is you can change the status here. So you can make it either uh, or active, review, approve, and resolve. Okay, and then after that, you can go to the report and then you can write a report. So we have a separate topic for that. So I'm just showing you the overview of your Navisworks uh, Clash Detective tool. Okay, so that's it for this video. On our uh, next video, what we are going to uh, talk about is we're going to learn how to use add, oh no, we are going to learn how to use select items for clash detection. Okay, for now, just an overview for the clash detective tool. Okay, so hopefully you have uh, learned something in this video. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can put it on the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Alright, so thank you for watching. Have a nice day.